Last year was a bit of an inflection point, kind of like a ground zero. Chrome 85, year of significant market share, had just added AVIF support. And Safari had finally added WebP support, kind of like closing the rings for your Apple Watch users out there. But something that I found really interesting was this chatter about people not wanting to use WebP, a 10-year-old format, until Apple added support. So I thought to myself, what would it look like a year later in terms of adoption? Well, I knew just the person to discuss that. Here to talk about a year-over-year -year adoption rate of AVIF, WebP, and then some is our favorite statistician, well, actually our favorite person overall, Paul Calvano. Enjoy. So hi everyone, I'm Paul. I'm a, um, I, uh, I work at Akamai, I'm a web performance architect there. Uh, and I'm also a bit of a data nerd. And so, yeah, as Anar said, he mentioned, he asked me a few weeks ago if I could look into, um, if I could look into the uh, adoption of um, WebP and ABIF. And he's, he's like, what, what, uh, what could you uh, extract from the HTTP archive? And I had a list. So I don't know how I'm going to fit this all in 15 minutes, but uh, let's uh, let's go. Uh, so all of the data from this presentation is going to is, is coming from the HTTP archive. Uh, the HTTP archive is an open source project that tracks how the web is built. Uh, it's been around since 2010. Uh, it was created by Steve Souders, uh, and that gives us a ton of historical data that can really show us not only how the web is built, but how the web has evolved. So one of the things I want to do before we start diving into the data is just um, for context, just to show you a brief overview of what the HTTP archive is and how it's collecting its data. So it all starts with the Chrome user experience report. Right? The Chrome user experience report is, is RUM data that Google provides. Um, people that are looking at Core Web Vitals are, are looking at some of their reports in that. Um, that, re that report, had, or the, the Chrome UX report, has about 7.5 million domain names in it. Um, and so what the HTTP archive does is it takes those seven and a half, the, the, those, the list of the, the Chrome UX report URLs every month and runs web page test measurements for each one of those. Now those web page test measurements are run for desktop, for emulated mobile, and there's also lighthouse tests that are run. Uh, it's all Chrome based. Um, and then the output of that is stored in Google's BigQuery. Uh, there's many, many terabytes worth of, of data in here. Uh, HAR files, lighthouse reports, summary data, um, response bodies, and so forth. Uh, the output of that then is used to create the htparchive.org website. So there's a, a ton of uh, historical like monthly trend um, reports where you can look at like what's the page weight look like over time and so forth. Uh, there's also a really, really fantastic discussion forum um, with, where there's uh, uh, lots of research uh, is shared on there with queries so that you can kind of dig into it. That's actually, the discussion forum is actually how I got into doing analysis with the HTTP archive. Um, and then uh, there's also the Web Almanac, which is an annual publication that um, we've been putting together for since 2019. Um, and it is, uh, it's hundreds of pages. Uh, it's all made available for free and it's community, um, it's a community authored event, uh, a community authored ebook. So it's uh, tons of great insight. Um, there's also a media chapter in there as well, where you'll find lots of uh, stats about, uh, about images. Uh, I think Eric Portis, who was uh, um, on one of the previous talks, he, uh, um, he actually wrote, uh, he was a co-author for the media chapter, I think it was last year or the year before. Uh, so since we're talking about a Chrome browser, uh, that also means that, there, that we're only talking about certain image formats. So obviously we're not going to be looking at JPEG XR or JPEG 2000. Um, we're going to really, uh, and, and, and this talk is really about the adoption of WebP and AVIF. Uh, for comparison purposes, I'll also be including JPEG. I'll also be including um, Ping, which by the way, am I the only one that realized today that it's called Ping and not PNG? <laughs> Uh, and then I couldn't find a logo for GIF images, so um, here's a GIF. Uh, but uh, as Honor said, we actually have a birthday today, right? So the, P the, the ping format is 25 years old. Uh, and earlier in, earlier in one of the talks, Tom mentioned that Greg, Greg Rolfs has uh, been main maintaining a PNG site. It's got a ton of historical information. Uh, I would encourage you to actually check that site out. Uh, I have a link here. Um, it has some amazing nostalgia from 1995 in there and you, you view the source on that. There's even some comments um, that have reference to like printing in Netscape Navigator. But now moving on to some of the, uh, some of the stats that I put together. So um, here's a couple of quick stats about images just to kind of show you some of what we could 
pull out of the HTTP archive. Um, out of, uh, um, so out of all seven and a half million pages, what I looked at was the, the median image weight across, uh, across them. And 45% of page content is made up of images. Uh, the other, the other uh, um, large percentage is JavaScript. Um, the, uh, so this is, this is something that is, has been pretty constant um, over the years as well. So images may, are, are you know, significant majority of, uh, of web content. Um, another thing, uh, and, and Tim talked a lot about loading of largest contentful paint images before. The median largest contentful paint image um, or the median largest contentful paint element when, it, it, when an image is used for the largest contentful paint element uh, is a, a 100 kilobytes. Uh, it was, I did some analysis on largest contentful paints um, for a blog post a few months ago, back in June. And back then it was 80 kilobytes. So um, we're, we're seeing an increase in the size of images that are being used for the largest contentful paint element. At the median, um, 881 kilobytes for, for image weight, right? And that's excluding, that's excluding pixels. The 28% of these seven and a half million websites have over 2 million, uh, I'm sorry, have, have over two megabytes of images, which is, which is huge. Um, so this, this also presents a, a significant opportunity to, to optimize images. Now, um, You've probably seen this Lighthouse audit. Um, it was recently updated to include uh, reference to, uh, to WebP and AVIF. So it says image, image formats like WebP and AVIF can provide better compression. It used to just say WebP. Uh, the, uh, so this, this audit shows you not only the estimated savings, um, but also the estimated savings in time, but also the estimated savings in bytes. And, um, and so, because we're running Lighthouse audits for all of these websites, we're able to actually look at what this looks like at scale, right? So across seven and a half million websites, and all of this data was run from September, in September from the, the September 2021 HTP archive run, 75% uh, of websites fail the uses modern image formats Lighthouse test, right? So the 25% um, is kind of a mix of uh, of pages that don't have a lot of images or pages that have just small enough images that they don't, um, the, the audit doesn't see, the, the, the audit doesn't feel that there's significant uh, byte savings um, for, for using the, the, the additional formats. The, uh, for when, and there's, there's a, and, and there, so they also show the potential byte savings in the Lighthouse score um, in, in the Lighthouse reports. And if we look at that in aggregate, um, I'm showing you the percentiles here from the 10th percentile all the way to the 90th percentile. Um, at, the, uh, at the median, 338 kilobytes of potential byte savings by using a modern image format, right? Now, remember our median image weight is 881 kilobytes. Um, at the P75, we're looking at 1.2 megabytes of potential savings. And at the P90, there's three megabytes, there's almost three megabytes of savings. So let's shift gears now and, and look at the popularity of image formats. Uh, so JPEG, PNG, and GIF are clearly the dominant formats on the web, right? Um, and, uh, and, and WebP is uh, almost 19% of, of images. Uh, AVIF is, is still growing, but it's 0.7% uh, as of last month. Now, what's important about this data is this is, this is, this is showing you the number of requests across 7.5 million websites, not the number of websites. And if we take a look um, at the, if we take a look at some of the addition, some additional stats around this, you can see, for example, five million, almost five million websites have have, J, have, have JPEGs on them, but there's six point two million host names, right? And for Ping, you can see almost the same, almost the same type of relationship: five point four million websites, six point seven million host names. So you have a pretty strong adoption on, on probably websites um, like primary image, um, uh, like the image, images that are delivered by the websites, as well as as well as third parties. With GIF, that skews a little bit more towards third parties, right? Two million websites and five point one million host names. But then when we start looking at WebP and, and, and AVIF, they uh, you've got one point four million websites um, have at least one WebP image on them, but there's only four hundred and forty thousand. Host names that are delivering WebPs, right? So that means that there's a lot of um, there's there's both a lot of websites that are delivering WebP, but there's a, a lot more um, there's a lot more WebPs being delivered by third parties. Uh, we see the same thing with with AVIF as well. Fifty two thousand websites um, have at least one AVIF image on it, 
um, but there's only 2,000 host names out of all of the host names that we can see in the HTTP archive that are serving an AVIF image. Um, the data for this was based on the content type response header. So I looked for um, image slash webp and image slash AVIF. And then for JPEG, ping, and GIF, um, there's a uh, you know, variety of uh, um, image formats um, strings that you'll kind of see for that. The, uh, when, I, when I took a look at the third party of serving, web, serving web, um, webp, what I found was that it was kind of split almost right down the middle between the large third parties and the and, and the rest of the web, right? And so Shopify, WordPress, and and Wix um, seem to dominate in terms of the amount of WebP um, image content that's being delivered on the web, right? And uh, um, as we saw in one of the earlier talks, uh, WordPress recently added WebP web, web, web support. Um, so this other this other half is is four hundred forty thousand host names, right? And so and that's about fifty percent of the requests that we looked at. When we when we look at the same with uh, uh, so when we look at the same for AVIF, um, Vimeo is, is the bulk of the AVIF um, requests. So it's, it's, um, it's more than half of, the, uh, um, of all of the requests. Uh, but there's a couple of other third parties here that are, 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 are prominent, Gumlet, Pokey, Etsy Static, um, Short Pixel, and so forth. Now, the Chrome User Experience Report recently introduced a ranking factor into their data. Right. So it gives us some insight into the popularity of certain websites. Years ago, we used to use the Alexa rank. Um, this, this is really great because it gives us um, all the way, up, it ranges between starting from the top thousand sites to the, and, then, and then factors of that. So all the way up to the, 10, the top 10 million websites. Right. Um, there's not necessarily a thousand websites in this list. I think that there's in the top thousand websites, we have about 750 or 800 uh, um, actual measurements. Um, but what you can see here is that there's, uh, um, there's, there's 188 websites um, that are very, very popular websites that have at least five WebP images that are served um, on them. Four websites that are in that, in that really, really popular um, category that are serving AVIF. Um, now, from the previous slide, you can probably guess that two of those are Vimeo and Etsy. Um, the, uh, but the other thing that's really, really interesting to note here is that the adoption is strong both for popular sites as well as unpopular sites. And I think that this, this speaks volumes to the developer enablement of, of using these formats, right? So we've got tools like Lighthouse that recommend them, um, create them, and, and, uh, um, and, and, and create them. We've got responsive image fe features in, uh, in, in the browser. We've got image CDNs. Um, essentially, the ecosystem has made it so that almost anyone can leverage these types of images, which is really, really nice to see. Now, looking at the trend of WebP and AVIF images over time, there's, there's definitely this steady growth. Um, but there's a lot going on in this, in this, uh, in this uh, time series graph. Right? So WebP was, um, the first time WebP was supported in the Chrome browser was, um, it, partial support was added in Chrome 9, all the way back in February of 2011. Um, but March, um, but, but March of 2013 is the very first time we saw a WebP image be delivered to one of the sites we were, we were measuring. Now, Chrome had full support in January of 2014, but at that time we we're still only seeing about less than five requests for WebP images. So we had browser support, but we didn't really have a whole lot of usage of the image format, um, at least on in terms of popular websites. The uh, in 2017, the Lighthouse audit was added. Now, before then, it, we had started seeing this kind of uptick of popularity of WebP, um, where more and more sites were adding WebP support and some image, some image CDNs were also adding WebP support. Um, and so what you can see here is that um, the Lighthouse audit didn't necessarily change the, um, the, change, change the rate of growth here. It happened right in the middle of this like, period of growth. Um, something else kind of kicked off in, in 2016 that, that caused that adoption, and it may have been CDN supports. Um, but we actually saw that, inc that rate increase from 326,000 um, requests measured in the, in the archive to 580,000 requests. So it was significant growth. Um, in uh, 2018, the, the amount of requests tripled. Now I could probably go and dig into the HTTP archive and try to identify exactly which, um, you know, which large third-party, um, you know, probably onboarded WebP or, um, to, at that point. But here's where it gets really interesting. Uh, 
The same month that Firefox supported WebP, traffic started growing. Right? And then again, when Safari started supporting WebP, it just continued to grow. So Chrome supported these formats for years. But one of the things that I can kind of infer from this data is that cross-browser support is, is really, really critical to ensuring that developers feel comfortable implementing this. Right? And John mentioned earlier that browser adoption, that browser adoption is, is, very, is very important to you know, the adoption of formats like JPEG XL. And I, I think this graph here really helps support that. Um, and this tiny little bump here is AVIF. Um, but we can kind of expand that and take a look at um, you know, what, what's, what's actually going on with this, even though it's you know fairly recent amount of traffic. So Chrome 85 introduced support for the AVIF image format. And right off the bat, we can start seeing some, some AVIF images. Right? The, uh, it's still you know, tiny, like we're still only talking about like, you know, tens of, like less than, less than 10,000 requests, but there's something. Um, I'm guessing that this was Vimeo. I didn't actually look to check, but I'm pretty sure that you know, from the previous graphs, um, this was probably a Vim, Vimeo or one of the larger sites that was uh, that, that had onboarded the uh, um, WebP format. I'm sorry, the AVIF format. Uh, but over here, you can see the Lighthouse audit was updated to include AVIF um, about a month or two ago. So the uh, we're start we're still seeing kind of this growth. Now, what's nice about this graph is that the AVIF format is growing um, almost from the moment that the browser. Um, that the browser uh, started supporting this. And I, I look forward to seeing if, if other browsers start to support the, the AVIF format, how that kind of shifts over time as well. Um, but uh, it's, uh, um, it's showing that like, you know, instead of like year, instead of going years and years and years with no adoption, this is really just starting to kick off. I guess it also really speaks to the kind of the ecosystem and the developer community as well. We're, we're kind of more, um, we're, we're more well-equipped to add support for um, for, for different uh, image formats. So I mentioned before that the HTTP Archive Web, Web Almanac um, is, uh, um, we're working on that um, right now. So this is a community authored ebook. I think there's around hundred contributors or more that are, that, that are part of this. So we have authors, analysts, translators, developers, and so forth. Um, the 2021 20, edition is coming out later this year. Um, so you can read the 2020 Web Almanac uh, at almanac.htparchive.org. Um, and uh, the 2021 um, edition is going to be coming out in December. So if, uh, if stats like this is interesting to you, then I encourage you to check it out. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to share a couple of uh, a couple of links to close this out. So the uh, the HTTP archive is all maintained in GitHub. If you're interested in contributing, you can um, you can find uh, you can find some issues there that you can help out with. Um, the HTTP Archive discussion forum at discuss.htparchive.org is just a fantastic resource um, for sharing research, asking questions, and just reading some insightful analysis. Um, and then the HTTP Archive also has a Slack channel. Um, anyone can join that. Um, so you know, definitely, uh, if you're if you're interested, uh, come join that, and uh, um, uh, and, and uh, you can find me there as well. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me on uh, on Twitter. My DMs are open. Thank you.